Okay, I think we're live. Okay, good morning, folks. We are live on Art Joyous Sharing, and this is Peg Robinson and Chelsea, and we come on Thursday mornings at 1030, and that's Central Standard Time. And, Shell, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing okay. I'm ready to play with some stuff and make something, and I don't really know what it's going to be, but we'll get to it. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not sure what we're going to do today. We're just having our usual play day. Yep, we are going to be using wooden substrates, and I need to stop this screen from popping back and forth. Okay. Um, I have a, a wooden pallet from Dale Rowney. I got this at Walmart, and it's it's some kind of wood that's not pine. Surprisingly, um, the other one I had that I played with, I got a lot of scratches in it, but this one seems to be fairly solid. And I have put gesso on it, and that's, I think I'm gonna do some sort of an assemblage type project um, on this wooden substrate. So, I think that'll have? be a lot of fun. I, you know, I have a big palette I was always gonna paint, but um, <laughs> it's a little bit too big <laughs> to put under the camera here. So I have several different substrates, and I just wanted to talk about wooden substrates for a minute this particular panel is uh out of a six pack from michael's their artist loft eight by eight panels and you know they were relatively cheap um i've masked off but you know it's it's solid wood and so if you're putting anything on to a surface wooden surface like this is really good because you're not going to have what you have with a canvas where it gets pressed down so I just started with a gesso layer on that. I also have, you know, everybody gets those embellishments, those little wooden embellishments, and they come in these cute little wooden boxes. And I thought, oh, that'd be cute to do a little assemblage in, you know, just a, a little something for a shelf or whatever. So, you know, I've painted that with some gesso. I also have uh, some mat board squares that I might end up, you know, mounting on another piece but um they're they're not wood they're more like chipboard mat board but um you know that is one thing that i might use and then i also have this is like cheapo cheapo you can see how rough the wood is um this is from walmart uh and it's a mix the media jelly bean soup piece and you know, it's got the hanger on it, so I have to keep that in mind when I'm painting and keep my thing going the right direction. But um, I liked that it had these boards and it had the rough texture. So we'll see what we do with that. And I think I'm going to start with that. What I did was um, coat it with a coat of uh, clear gesso to start with. So I'm just going to set these other pieces aside to finish drying, and I'm going to start on that. What are you doing first? Um, I'm going to say hi to Marie and Laura and Lisa who have joined us now. Good morning, ladies. I'm glad you're here. Um, I think I'm going to, I'm going to think I'm going to start with putting some texture on this. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I really am like not sure, but I have this, um, <clears throat> everything circles, uh, stencil. I think it's from, excuse me for a moment. <clears throat> Jeez, I need to take a drink of water. <laughs> oh. Um, it's from the Crafters Workshop. And because this is a palette, I have some of these uh, old nasty paintbrushes, you know, ones that come with kids' stuff and ones that I've totally ruined. Um, <laughs> they're losing their things, you know, whatever. Something I'm not going to use anymore. Or maybe I left it out and it, I can't get the crusties out of it. So I thought I might put those on. So if I'm going to put these on, I thought I needed places that that were reminiscent of, um, you know, the, the idea of the circles of paint. So I thought I would use this and some light molding paste just to make some of those on this side to balance my composition. So I think that's what I'm going to start with. And then I'm, of course, going to have to dry that. But yeah, it, I'm going to use cool. the light paint so that it can uh, dry quicker. So that's what i that's my big plan i like it i like your plan <laughs> i'm just putting some uh paint out i have some uh deco art paint 
and I think what I want to do on this surface is just start with dry brushing because um, I don't want to lose all that pretty wood that's underneath there. That's kind of why I put the gesso down so that, you know, I can get some of that going. And I've just put, let's see, this is a cobalt teal hue and a cerulean blue and a Titan buff out on my plate. And I'm going to get a really rough... Um, you know, this is these are those brushes that you get from the uh, dollar store. You know, really not very good brush because what I want is to just dry brush this on here. So I'm going to start with this this blue and I'm going to you know tap it off of my brush so that I don't have very much on there. And then I'm going to start. Let's see. I think I want to start like down here where there might be more of a horizon and just put a little bit of dry brush with that blue i think i need a little more of that and i'll just i'll just layer i'll just layer some colors on here for my background because i i do want to see that wood grain but i do want to get a little on the edge here so how's everybody doing this morning? What's everybody up to? Um, I want to say hi to Barb and to um, Laura and Lindy and Ian. Good morning. Good morning. We're glad you're all here with us. People are pouring in. So I have uh, used this light molding paste and I've put three, that should probably be, maybe I'll put one more. Uh, just, you know, this, this stencil has a lot of different circle options. Uh -huh. So um, it's kind of fun, actually. And I'm just putting the molding paste, of course, you guys have seen this before, using a offset spatula type of a palette knife. I'm just putting it through the stencil to give a little bit of, of a texture there. So I, I think that that's, that's going to be enough, I think. So, yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, I don't want to overdo it, although it was kind of fun. Right. It was fun. It was a lot of fun, but <laughs> and I want to go crazy. I'm going to get that all off the Oh, Lindy's here too. Hi, good morning. Lisa, Lindy. Gang's all here. Yay. <laughs> They're rolling in. Here they are. Come and see what we're doing this morning. Maybe they know what we're doing because we certainly don't. <laughs> yeah. We're trying. We're trying to get a handle on it. <laughs> Giving it our best go. Yeah. I don't know. I think I might want to put a little of that on the side, too. Just saying. Maybe just a little. Just a little. It's funny that you're dry brushing because my first instinct would have been to glaze on that surface. Because, you know, use either very watered down or, or put some glazing medium so that mm -hmm. it soaks into all the little cracks instead of dry brushing. Whereas dry brushing also gives you all the texture both of those things would have given you texture right but it's just a preference a preference i guess yeah well <laughs> see i i glaze after i put this color on mm -hmm. yeah, like you said it's a preferential thing it's how each person works their own process and um we all kind of have our own methodology on how yep. we do it that's why it's fun to watch more than one person work at a time because, you know, it's not the same. It's not the same always. Yeah, I've really noticed that since we've been doing the live show because you and I like the same things. Maybe we don't like the same colors, but we, I always thought we had a similar style, but we really don't. <laughs> we do completely different things. We do. We do different yeah. things. Which is good for our show because it gives variety, but 
I'm going to mute for a second and okay. um, dry this stuff. Okay. So you talk. So, <clears throat> yeah, this is nothing special. I'm just getting the background down on here and um, doing a little cross hatch with my Titan buff on top of that. And I'll get a little of that Titan buff on the edges. And then I'll have to dry a bit because I want to come over it with another ceiling coat and glaze. I make my own uh, varnish out of some, and I, the reason I'm using it is kind of, I want to have kind of a beachy antique -y look to this piece. So um, this is a glaze that I make out of deco art varnish and the uh, quinacridone uh, gold. You could, you could use like the burnt sienna, you could use the uh, burnt umber, you could use a number of different things um, that just happens to be what I have in this particular bottle. So while she's still uh, doing that, I think I'll take a little bit of this. Uh, I've got, I'm going to set this aside to dry. I'm going to take a little bit of this burnt umber. And doesn't take much. And now that I've got this tray coated with gesso, I'm just going to hit some of the edges with that. And I have a plan for the backs of these little boxes. Um, I had made some, uh, what do they call that stuff? It's like um, coffee stain papers. So I will be gluing in some of those um, coffee stain papers into the background. I'll show you that in just a little bit here. Let me get just a simple coat of this down. And then I also want... Let me see if I can get, I'm going to rinse that out of my brush. And I'm going to show you these coffee papers. This is just um, mixed up batch of strong coffee and splashed on some paper to give it more of an antique -y look. And then I cut that down into little squares that will fit right into the the box, but before I do that, I want to distress the edges of my squares. How's it going, Shell? It's going good. Um, I've got that all dry, and I think I'm gonna I'm gonna collage on some paper elements. This is a Maya Road um, craft doily that I got a long time ago, mm -hmm. and I think it would just make an interesting little bit of texture right here in the middle yes it and will. then i think all the rest of the elements i'm going to put on i'm probably going to put on with hot glue or e6000 or something like that yeah center that. i just thought it would this would would make interesting texture so just using some liquitex uh, gel matte medium to put that on and I want to make sure that I clear it out of all the little holes or else it's going to uh, not have any texture at all. <laughs> if the matte medium decides to settle down into all those little holes, that's not going to work, is it? Yeah. Uh, Laura, Laura said she was watching the fast version of our videos <laughs> and she just realized that she could catch the lives. It's like, well, welcome. <laughs> We're glad you're yeah. here with us live this week. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, yeah. You can always catch the replay, um, either fast or slow. But uh, if you just want a quick catch up of what we've been doing, we do put fast version out on our own channels and yep. give you an opportunity to peruse before you actually get to the down and dirty. You can always come in and fast forward to the spot where you see something you didn't quite understand and catch it that way too. So. 
Yeah, down down in the um, if you're watching on a computer for sure, I know this because I checked it out yesterday. In the settings, if you hover at the bottoms of the video, there's that little flower. You can click on that and you can speed it up. And the reason that I that I was looking at that is because one of my persons had commented that she slowed down. You know, you can speed up or slow down, and she'd slowed down one of my videos. I think it was the one where I was tying all the knots um, on that binding that I did yeah, recently. Yeah, yeah. She said a lot it was of knots. <laughs> a lot of knots. She just wanted to look, you know, at the process yeah. of yeah. tying it, but she yeah. said it was fun because I sounded drunk. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, it slows down your voice too. I, I would yes, recommend turning the sound off, but she's like, "Yeah, I sounded really drunk." It was funny. So then I I checked that out to see how it worked because I've never done that before and it's definitely available yeah. um, for everyone to do that so you can always change the speed I remember as a kid you know when we would um, speed up the phonograph record or slow uh -huh. it down because it yeah. was funny funny to listen to those different voices so it sounded like the chipmunks <laughs> yeah exactly Probably how they make the chipmunk voices. Oh, uh, yeah, probably so. So I finally got smart on the E6000. Um, this is a really great glue, stinky glue, to glue things down permanently. But I was buying the bigger bottles. There's tubes of it. And I would use it once, and it would dry out. <clears throat> so I finally found these at Walmart the other day. In little teeny tiny tubes so uh -huh. i can use just one little tube and throw it away and i won't have to be trying to figure out how to get through the dried stuff and open that tube so that i can get out that last bit of glue so i'm gonna try these out this time well uh, and the, the other thing that i have found with those tube adhesives um if you've got those metal type tubes uh -huh. you can you can cut the very end of that off and you can squeeze some out this end and then you can like take a clip, you know, and fold it over mm -hmm. and clip it shut. So, I mean, that's how I've saved some stuff in a tube like that. that whoops, sorry, didn't mean to drive you guys crazy here. Um, you can actually get to the bottom of those tubes that way. Yeah, I've done that and I've like taken the lid off and poked, poked holes, you know, to, through mm -hmm. the gunk. And I mean, I've, We've all done all that stuff. It's just frustrating. It's like, yeah, why can't they make this so that it doesn't happen? And I've, you know, I clean it off and try to be smart about getting the glue off before I shut it. But once it's open, yeah, the air gets to it, and then you're just doomed. You're just doomed. So I also have my hot glue gun, and I might com combo, you know. Yeah, I, I do that quite often. I like to use the combo because the hot glue over a long period of time does not hold. So I'll, I'll use the hot glue to hold things in place until the gel sets. Seems to be a good combination. So, is this thing starting? It, it's still, still a little damp. I might have to put the heat tool to it. Start with my biggest one. Come on, Hockey, come out. Why are you not coming out? Lindy says, Shall I had a tube of E6000 that, like a voodoo doll, it had so many straight pins in it? <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, go ahead and stick that thing. I think I've imagined managed to break my hot glue gun. I don't know how the heck you break a hot glue gun. Oh, well. But it's not coming out, and it's heated up, and it's hot. I can't figure it out. Ouch. I just burned myself with it, so I know it's hot. <laughs> it's hot. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Yeah, that hurt. Why is it not coming out? That's crazy. Like, it'll come out a little bit if I push from the back. Oh, the trigger isn't working? I don't know, maybe. It looks like it's working. I don't know. Huh. 
This is very strange. Very strange. So, have you guys all got stuff lined up for your summer? For June, school's getting out. You know, things are starting to rev up for the summer. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> I think I want to do a little bit of glazing on there before I before I put these in place and also want to do a little bit on here. So let me get a different brush and I've got a, a clean spot on my palette here. Clean spot. I know, clean cut, move down. Mm -hmm. First, <laughs> I, my finger isn't so clean anymore, but <laughs> uh, all right, got a brush. And a rag, and I'm ready to go. So I'm just gonna start with start with this piece. I think I'll start here on the side. I'm gonna put put some on, and then I'm gonna take a baby wipe and just wipe it back a little bit. Like so. And put some on. Let it soak in where it will. But you can still see the wood down underneath all of that, which is kind of what I was going for. And then we'll move around here. And get this edge coated with that varnish mixture. Last side, and then we'll do the top. You guys see that see that grain and that texture in there that's kind of what I was looking for and then we'll do the top surface see what we can get going here uh, hello via hello Ela you're just joining us See if anyone else would be We're glad you're here. Yep. Let that sit just a minute. Well, I come over here and do a little bit of the edges. On this piece, so I've got out some other uh, wood stuff, and um, well, that's weird. I have like this box of wood stuff. I've got some chip or grunge board stuff, 
And I've got I've I got a box of wood, a box of metal things, and um, I put on this little canvas and these butterfly wings around the edges. Um, I just want to make sure that they're not that the glue is not gloppy. Yeah, gloppy is not good. Um. My hot glue gun definitely is having a problem that is I it? cannot mm -hmm. solve at this point. Oh. Maybe when I started to push the new glue stick in, it squeezed out the back, and maybe the glue stick is the wrong size. Oh. Uh, or, Do you have know. different size glue sticks there? Well, I just bought these. When I, oh. um, I can't imagine it could be the. How could it be the wrong size? It's a mini glue gun. It's a mini glue stick. Yeah, it should but that be right. other glue is glopping out the, the mm. back side of it, which is weird. But anyway, I'm uh, gluing on some different elements. And I just noticed that this wood one has a section of the laser cut, a couple sections of the laser cutting that are not out. Hmm. They're not cut out. So I'm just using my craft knife to get that stuff out and of course my e6000 is just sitting here oozing away yeah like they do it's like could you not ooze all over my desk please <laughs> i had no idea that my technical difficulties this day were going to involve glue problems yeah. who knew you just never really know, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, glue problems. Everybody's saying mm -hmm. hello, Holly, Marilyn. Oh, yeah. Hi, Holly. Hi, Mark, Marilyn. Let's see. I have some gel medium. Maybe Wait. you won't have glue problems like me. Well, I'm just going to do the, the good old brush technique. So I need a, not my best brush. I need one of my scruffies here. There we go. <laughs> one of my well-used brushes. We all have those. I will use this opportunity to glue in my pieces of coffee paper. And hopefully they stay down where I want them to go. You can always just kick them. Well, sometimes <laughs> for something like this, you know, because it's small, I'll just take a paint bottle and set it on top of that area. Try to hold it in place. But those those corners, you know, it's always those corners, right? True. So I coat both the box itself and the paper to get good adhesion. And I'll put another bottle of paint on that. <laughs> Clean cut, move down. I am liking the way this one turned out though. I think that, I like that uh, rustic look on there. You know, it's still got the character of the wooden surface, which is kind of what I was after. Wasn't sure. You know, sometimes you start something like that. You're not sure if you're going to be able to achieve the look you're going for. We just keep playing, hoping for the best. Yep. How's the sound in the picture for everybody today? Everybody doing all right? Hopefully we're not having any technical difficulties. Seems like the last couple weeks we've done pretty well in that category. <laughs> yes, we haven't been uh, struggling so much lately. Yeah. With all the weird 
changing the things. And yeah, maybe YouTube's finally calmed down. Maybe. I hear you rattling. You must be into the good stuff. I got the metal out now. I was just uh, ooh metal. My favorite. What else might look good on here? I don't know. You know, gotta go through all the stuff and oh, things. Oh yeah. To make got sure. The stuff. Gotta put it on. I like these keys. I think it might be a good choice. Oh, so the first half hour's gone, Shell. Really? <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to, you know, keep track of things so we know where we are. Don't want to rush uh, or anything. Probably should uh, start um, thinking about putting paint on this at some point. Kind of paint are you going to use today? Well, I have two choices. I could make something really colorful, or when I was at Michael's um, buying my mom something to put her essential oils in, I need a storage container to put my essential oils in. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I bought this um, patina set from Finnabar Art Basics. Oh, good. I haven't I haven't been able to get those yet. I've looked for them and nobody's got them yet. Well, what I was looking for was that opal um, paint that they have, yeah. and I wanted to use that, but this was what they had. They didn't have the opal paint. Ah. So I understand that this is like three different colors, and it's got kind of a really scratchy, sandy one, and then a little bit less texture, and then no texture for the last. So I could do that as a, like a patina effect, mm -hmm. if, or I could do something that... That is different than that. So if you guys have an opinion on that, uh, let me know. Speak now. <laughs> yeah. If you guys would like to see me use the patina set for the first time, figure out how it works, say that. Or if you think I should just use regular paint, say that. I would like to know what you want to watch. Yeah. The big watch this week was the wedding. <laughs> Everybody was watching the wedding. Yep. Yeah, this is this is going in a place that I enjoy. I think. I think it's going to be great. I, I um, oh, it makes me want to get that big one out and do one too because I've got so much stuff to that I can put on it. It's just I'm going to have to get a big easel to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> Which means I have to drag stuff out of the corners. Oh, you know what I did? Oh, yeah. that was stupid. I was going to put some uh, text into the background. I guess that means I'll have to do some tissue paper. I guess so. Oh, what have I got around here? So I can let that one. So here's what I have so far. I have um, the coffee stain papers in the little box. And now I'm going to set that aside to dry. And I need to go back to this piece. Because what I had in mind for this one was just maybe some pretty summery uh, something. Beachy, I don't know. I guess I'm kind of tired of the beachy theme. Maybe I'll just do some flowers. Maybe just some flowers. What have I got? I've got... Um, I've got sticky fingers. That's what I've got. <laughs> Glue problems, I'm telling you, glue problems. Oh, there we go. All right. Um, I have those poppies would look kind of cool on there. 
What do you guys think? Poppies? I like those. I like this background, too. How about that? Let's go with that. This is a... I'm going to use the outline on this just to um, get an image on here. And I think I will use a portion of this with my... Let's see how dry this is. I might have to heat this just a little bit before I start. I'm going to go on mute a minute, Shell. Okay. Yeah. Just going to unplug that heat, that hot glue, because it definitely is there's something wrong. <laughs> I don't know what. So, oh well. So then I'm going to have the... Um, fun of trying to figure out how to paint around this without anything moving because all the the glue isn't dry um let's see what did people say people said lindy said she just bought the patina barbara wants to see the patina laura wants to see it um marilyn says color is always good Pia wants to see the patina. Looks like it's going to be the patina. So I'm going to gesso everything that's on here first. And um, then we'll go in with the patina set. So I need to... Uh, how am I going to do this with the glue still wet? I sure wish my hot glue gun was working. Just, I guess I'm just going to have to be super careful. Super, super careful. Not to disturb anything, I guess. Hmm, white gesso or black gesso? White gesso or black gesso? Or copper paint? Or... Well, you guys know I love copper. So I think I'm just going to be weird and go with the copper paint over the whole thing. Ah, I need to put gesso on first. I guess I'm going to go with heavy gesso first. <laughs> black. I'm going to go black. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Sure. I'm very indecisive today. So I've got Liquitex black colored gesso. And I'm just going to put a bunch of that on my palette. And we'll go with that first. Uh, what sort of brush? I want to use a really crummy brush. But I want one that I can get down in the corners and creases of things. This one will work. So I'm going in with the gesso all over everything, and I'm trying to to keep the textures that I have, but uh, also get in and around all everything inside the cracks, under the the thing. See, these things are moving. Dang it! I wished I had like five hours to let it dry. You can't really do that live, can you? No, you cannot. I will answer myself. <laughs> it's okay, Shell. We we understand when you're talking to yourself. I do that all the time. You know, I keep talking about how I have to hold my tongue right when I'm crafting. So I am just hitting the edges of this um, with some archival ink. Uh, I want something permanent that's going to stick down there on the edges. But I wanted to, you know, bring that whole border in and, you know, even even hit the corners and edges on the outside with that. Um, give it a little bit more of that weathered, distressed look with that archival ink. Makes sense to me. So, we've got that on there now. And that was the potting soil. Um, I also have tree branch. And I'm just, you know, coming in a little bit further with the tree branch and lightly. Because I don't really want to uh, obliterate the lovely colors that we have going on here. And then I have this uh, slapstick stamp from Penny Black that I'm going to use 
just to give me some kind of idea about where I want to go with my painting. And I will, let's see, probably use the archival black for that. Um, now, I should probably do stays on. Where stays on? And because it's a different type of surface, um, stays on is going to work on a lot of other surfaces. So I'm just going to ink that up with stays on and see if I can get enough of an impression to know where I want to go with my paint. You know, you don't have to follow a stamp specifically. You can just use it as a guide. So I'm going to put that on there and hope for the best. I just use my fingers to walk around. Let's see how we're doing if we're getting anything. Oh, yeah, we are. Okay. Got it like that. Got a little something going on. So there's my stamped image on my wood. Clean that up and put it back on the sheet, carrier sheet, and put it back in the, these are those little um, plastic holders that I like to use to store my stamps. And then I've also got this Dragonfly collage. I'm thinking I might want to use just a little bit of that over in this area. We'll see. Maybe not. I don't know. We can always do that later. All right. <laughs> I need to get some paint going here. So I'm going to use the DecoArt Media paints once again. And um, so I'm just getting out my palette. And I want some, let's see, I'm going to put some, I'm going to put some gesso down first on these uh, poppies just so that I have an area that I'm going to paint into. If I can find a decent brush. Oh, okay, here we go. This doesn't look too bad. So if I had uh, thought about it, um, white gesso might have been a better choice because I've already glued all this stuff down and I'm having a bit of a tricky time. <laughs> Getting um, in and under all these cracks, especially over this this big collection over here on the side, um, yeah, of all my brushes and everything, um, I can't get down in between too well or under. Mm -hmm. I kind of can. It's I mean it's okay, but since I'd already put the white gesso to prevent the wood from soaking up all the medium that I was putting on it, I yeah. should have just went with white. Yeah. Or else painted it first with black gesso, which would have been well. Also, so, you know, but I didn't. I didn't plan. See, that's that's where planning comes in. <laughs> yeah, what's that saying? Um, into intuition. Uh, <laughs> the the whole you know the whole intuitive painting thing. Mm -hmm. Intuition uh, without intent <laughs> is crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So true. So the the other thing, Shell, that I like to use if I'm doing a piece like that, and and other people may want to know, um, I have spray gesso. Oh, you can get it in a spray form. And so, like, if you're if you're going to do a big project like this, and you want to get in and around things, you can take that outdoors and just spray the heck out of it and get a good coat of gesso on there. I don't currently own any spray gesso, so. Also, we're live. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'm just saying for, for people yeah. that are wondering how, how to do this or, you know, what 
what's the best methodology. Sometimes, sometimes that's one of the things that I will do is, uh, especially those assemblage type things like that. Um, you saw maybe the mermaid that I did that was assemblage that was in a little wooden box. Mm -hmm. um, I took that out and sprayed the heck out of it to make sure I got a good coating. That's smart. I'm just kind of like turning everything and looking underneath and trying to jam this crappy brush underneath. Uh huh. You know, trying to get all the spots if I can. Yeah. It's the only thing well, I can do. And you're going to have more layers of stuff going on. So, probably. You know. Yeah. Can I use that patina set? So, yeah. We'll see what happens with that. I don't really want to touch this, but I guess I'm going to have to because the glue is not dry. Uh, Letty says more projects to add to her to-do list. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, we always love to give you something to do. It's, you know, summer's coming. It's time to do some stuff. Right. I saw that uh, advertisement for a class that looked fun. I'm not going to take it because I don't have the money, but art journaling summer school. Doesn't that sound fun? Oh, yeah. I signed up for a, there was a fundraiser one where you got, oh, I can't even tell you how many classes were in this fundraiser. But it was like $100. And I thought, well, you know, if I do one of those classes out of that whole batch, I will have, you know, spent my money wisely. And it was a bunch of instructors that I like and know. So, yeah, I signed up for it. I have done a couple of them, um, a couple of the ones that were in the picking already. So I knew who the instructors were and that there were some good, um, there was some good instruction there. So I wasn't hesitant about yeah, signing the, up. This one that I saw has like Dina Wakely and, you know, all these different people that you recognize their names, plus people yeah. I didn't recognize. Um, Kate Crane from the UK that does the yeah. gel printing stuff. Yeah. She's in there. Well, like, you would oh. love that. Kate yeah. would give you a lot of good fun tips. Yeah. I like her. I like to watch her, her yeah. stuff when she's on gel press or jelly arts or whichever one it is. I'm not sure. I think it's gel press. Yeah. And and honestly, um, Dina is a really good teacher. Yeah. I have several mm -hmm. of her books and enjoy perusing that and you know, trying to work out of some of that. Sometimes I do, you know, when I'm stalled or want to do something different, I'll pick up a book like that and I'll just do an exercise out of a chapter. Yeah. It's a good thing to do. I got to remember to breathe when I do this. You gotta put your tongue just right. Don't forget to put your tongue right. I'm working on that. <laughs> yeah, because otherwise it doesn't turn out. I know. You gotta have it just right. Yeah, I wasn't sure how much I would get done today, but I thought, you know, in between drying times, I should have, that's kind of how I work or how I like to work is to have several projects going at the same time so that stuff can be drying. Cause I don't necessarily always want to dry everything with a heat tool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would actually like to let this thing dry naturally, but I'm not going yeah. to because I have got to do it faster. But I think I've got most of most of everything just sewed, you know, I think. Just need to make sure that the edges are done. I think I'm going to hang this on my door. The door must be here. Yeah. yeah. That's why I originally thought 
of it um, when I bought this. That's what I thought I was going to do. Yeah. Was uh, put it on the door of my studio, and then if the door shut, you know, don't come in. Yeah. Of course they do anyway. <laughs> I know. They think I'm always available for whatever little whim or need they might have. And that includes all of them, from the youngest ones to the oldest ones. Uh -huh. Just come in whenever they feel like it. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I think I've got Good. it all. Well, I can't get down underneath the brushes, but besides that, everything else is pretty good. Yeah. 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 Good. I'm going to mute. So okay. I can well, I'm just painting. Um, I'm going to get out a little bit of this halo green blue. And I want a little bit of green gold, wherever that is. Somewhere over here, I should have some. Um, there's a little green yellow. Come on. Come out. There we go. That one's getting a little thickish. And then the green gold, one of my favorites, green gold. And I want to take just a little bit of the gesso out here on my palette because I want to mix some of that. I start with this darkest color and I'm going to start putting in some color where I want some leaves and let that first coat of white gesso dry a bit while I'm painting leaves. And I'm not, you know, I'm not following the pattern totally. I'm just, you know, getting the, using it for the idea and the positioning of my flowers. Got a long list, Thea? Yeah. <laughs> Summer, it can be like that for sure. I've got to go out and do some things in my yard because the, the rain has made it crazy here. I don't know about you guys, but we have had a bunch of rain. And everything has just gone berserk. You know, I've mowed, but <laughs> it needs more. needs a lot more. Uh, I want to get my stem coming down here. And a stem coming down here. And another color. In my leaves. Just layering, layering color. You know, you want don't want it to look flat. You want to have multiple layers of color here. And thinking about shadowing and where, you know, it's underneath the petals is going to be darker than out towards the tip. Is it hot? Oh, my. Um, yeah, we haven't really had a lot of hot. I mean, yesterday actually got up to... 75 celsius which you know is just real temperate here um i would like something around in the 80s because i'd like to you know i'd like to get out of my shorts <laughs> i would like to uh enjoy the summer a little bit more and we haven't really had a lot of that yet and 
this year has just been so weird because it's been a really cold year for us. And not much of a spring. I mean, it went right from cold into warming up. So, uh, Shell says, uh, I must want to be a snowbird. And I think she's right. I do want to be a snowbird. I want to go south for the winter. And enjoy that warm weather they have in the south. This is about the time that all the snowbirds leave here. Yeah. <laughs> Because well, they want yeah. to go back to the cooler areas because it was 98 degrees Fahrenheit yesterday. Well, and it's just getting nice here, so. So I've unboxed this Fin and Bear Art Extravagance Patina Effect Paste. And it, the mint color, the greenish color, mint green is very, um, has sand in it or something. Oh. Fun. And then, then the, uh, yeah, it is. Then this one's just called blue. It looks more turquoise, and it's it's creamier but still thick. And then this uh, one that is called brass is just smooth, smooth, uh, uh, thick acrylic. Hmm. So I guess I'm going to start with the crunchy one first, which is also the lightest color. And um, I need a stiff, something stiff, stiff. You have a Dina Wakely brush? Those are always stiff. Um, I might have one. She likes a really stiff brush. <laughs> this is a Dina brush. Yeah, you can try that. These are weird. Hmm. It's crumbly. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Interesting. It's sandy and crumbly and uh, textural. Yeah, it's interesting, different. Uh huh. Different stuff. Like you can see the flakes are flaking. Those are uh. flake, flaky flakes. That was like at all. What is it? No, it's just. I think it's got. My guess would be plaster of Paris. Ah, uh, okay. And maybe even sand mixed into it. Yeah, could be. Yeah, different. Yeah, I like, like I kind of like to do that. I like to analyze what the heck did they put in this to make it do that, right? Yeah, I think I think I could manufacture this myself. I mean, not, not manufacture, yeah. but I could make this. this. You could come up with something, right? Well, and that's kind of, kind of what we need to do when we have so many supplies already, too, right? Yeah. Well, I bought this with my 40% off coupon because I was at Michael's. I didn't, like, go out and search for it particularly. Uh, but I did want to try those opal paints, and that's so that's the reason I was in that. Uh, well, um, trust me. I, if I had seen that stuff, I probably would have tried it out myself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think it was fourteen ninety five for the the three color set, and then um, of course forty percent off that plus tax. Well, I've been to a lot of the you know because I've been traveling a bit. I've been to a lot of the Michaels stores, and I thought they were supposed to be carrying it, and nobody has it. I mean, I was in St. Louis, I was in Chicago. Um, I don't know. I don't know what, if they just got it and it sold out immediately or if they just haven't gotten it in. I don't know either because I thought that there was going to be a full range and there wasn't that much stuff there. Yeah. Um, a lot of the racks, you could tell that there had been something, but it was empty. And I was looking also in that same section for the Jane Davenport stuff because I know she came out with a lot more stuff this year mm -hmm. at Creativation because I talked to her. and. Yeah. Um, it wasn't there. She said it was all going to be carried at uh, Michael's, and it wasn't hardly maybe. anything. Maybe they just can't get their shipments in or something. Yeah, I think, I think retail is really, really suffering from the fact that we buy everything online. 
I mean, I do. I'm, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I buy everything online. It's cheaper, and it comes right to my house. <laughs> and you go to the store, and you can't find what you're looking for. Yeah. I think that maybe it's, you know, it's a cause and effect thing. We can't find what yeah. we're looking for because the stores don't think that they'll be able to sell it, so they don't order it. And so then we buy it online, and it just is a big circle. Yeah. So. Could be right. I think that might be what's going on. I had to take my mom's... Um, watch in for a new battery she has you know one that has swiss whatever uh -huh, inside of it uh -huh. and i had to uh find a place to take it so i went to this mall which you know had the batch the the jewelry repair and watch repair place uh -huh. in it and at least 50 percent, if not more of the the mall stores were empty or vacant uh, that's that's sad and I used to go to that mall with the kids. I remember taking them there because it had a movie theater yeah. and everything. And the movie theater's still open, but the retail outlets are all empty. But the movie theaters, I mean, my goodness, I went to the movies recently. And there were like maybe six people in the movie theater. <laughs> well, because they can guess, get it all at home. Yeah, I guess you can just look at your, your smart TV these days and just... Uh, yeah, they can order it up. When, yeah. Whenever they want it, they're in their living room, so they don't go out. Yeah, but you don't get the movie theater popcorn if you do that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Oh, well. <laughs> my, my local uh, grocery store has lots of good popcorn. Yeah, that's true. But it's just not the same. It's not the same as going to a place and the smell of the popcorn is permeating every inch of the place. and. I just think that's fun. But, I, of course, I haven't been to a movie in, like, I don't know, three years. I'm just saying I like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I get it. I don't have time to do it. Yeah. So Nor I'm anyone to go it. with. Yeah. It was my daughter's um, birthday, and so I was treating her. We went out to a meal and a movie and, uh, of course, popcorn and all that stuff. Awesome. You probably spent about a hundred dollars. Um, <laughs> no, actually I took her to a matinee. So oh. the movie itself really wasn't bad because it was about 10 bucks for us to get into the movie. What kills you is the concession stand. Yeah. The popcorn and drinks. Concessions are ridiculous, but I have one of those uh, movie membership cards. So I was able to get a whole bucket and a drink, I think for 20 bucks. Oh, nice. So it wasn't too bad, but still, you know, 20 bucks, 30 bucks. Okay. So, yeah, it was 30 bucks for us, to, for two of us to go to the movies. But Last I time. saved my coupons, right? Get my discounts. The last time, I guess, I guess I have been to a movie. I went to a movie with my son, and it was at the theater uh, near my house, and they had changed their prices. Uh -huh. for the theater to all day, every day, all day long was matinee price. Yeah. So there was no matinee. So it was actually much cheaper. <coughs> yeah, because they can't get people to come anymore. So until our, ours doesn't change to an evening price until like 4 o'clock. Yeah. This doesn't even have an evening price. It's just wow. matinee price every day, all day no matter what time you come. And I thought, well, that's good. I I would be more likely to come. Yeah. Because, you know, you, you want to go to the matinee to save the money, and then you forget, and you don't get there on time. And so... Well, and the working stiff can't really get there <laughs> to the matinee, you know. Exactly. Exactly. So... Yep. I thought that was different and new. when we went there this last time, which was maybe a couple months ago. Thanks, Via. She says it's looking great. This stuff, this sandy stuff is flaky. Huh. I'm not sure. Do I just wipe all the stuff Does that doesn't it here? Well, it's some of it's sticking, but some of it's flaky and um, mm. coming off. So I don't know what my what the proper process here is, but I guess I'm just gonna tap it and let anything that's loose come off and then yeah. start with my next layer. Yeah. So. It's all over my desk. 
all over my desk. Oh boy. But it's kind of kind of cool. It feels it feels like what you would expect from a um, you know an old crusty thing. Uh huh. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of copper paint though before I go to my next one, just around some areas to kind of highlight. You gotta have copper. Well, that's right. I mean, this, <laughs> this does come with something called brass. But Ooh. See, you know, yeah. I would like I would like the brass. I think, you know, because I I like the more antiquey looking metals. Mm -hmm. oh, I can't get the lid back on. Uh oh. Where's my copper paint? I'm just gonna add just a little bit of that because it is darker darker orange than this brassy whatever thing it comes with this. Hmm. Mm. So I got some of that on my palette, and I'm just gonna uh, I'm gonna find a brush of some sort. Wish there was a better way to show this. I I think my hand gets in the way of the painting. The painting. Mm -hmm. See, this is all like getting a lot of bits and bobs coming off it here when I brush over it. I see. It's looking good, though. I like it. Thank you. It looks like, it does look like a patina for sure. And then yeah. I've just got, you know, the turquoise color still in the the uh, other highlighting uh -huh. color still. I wouldn't say that this is like something that I would do every day, but um, it's kind of cool. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun and different. Well, I've I've used your products and I like them. I think they're they're a fun thing to play with. Yeah, she has a lot of good fun stuff to play with. I have uh, the. I haven't really used much of her uh, specialty stuff like this, but I, of course, have all the, like, the art basics. Mm -hmm. Basics. I <laughs> have the basics of the basics. Well, they're good quality. I mean, yeah. I have enjoyed using her basics because they had better mediums than a lot of others. And, you know, her her ability to create I think has helped the industry come up with better products for us. Yeah, I think that's true. I do. And she's fun to watch and she has a cool yeah. accent. <laughs> I like her accent. So, yeah. All right. That's, it's kind of interesting and different now. I'm going to go with the, the turquoise color next, I guess. We'll see how much sandy stuff it has in it. get the other stuff off my brush. Oh, why is it so... Huh. What's going on? It almost feels like it's dry or something. I guess I guess it's the same thing as the other stuff. It's just uh, thick, thick and hmm. heavy and um, I don't know. It's weird. I haven't watched anybody use that product. Um, I guess number one because I didn't have it, and um, so I don't know the qualities of it. It's thick. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> okay then, it's thick. <laughs> it's thick. Take her word for it. It's thick. It's very thick. So I'm just putting. Uh, more layers of color down. Um, I want to create some depth in my flower painting and, you know, some highlights and 
I do that with the different layers of color. You know, you should probably be, uh, you would probably know this stuff was thick if you looked at the thing and said, it says paste. <laughs> it doesn't say yeah. paint. It, it says, says paste. paste. Yeah. Okay. So that's probably why it's. Why it's paste. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't feel waxy. It feels like an acrylic. Yeah. But it's very uh, thick, very thick and heavy. But huh. this blue color doesn't seem to have the same um sandy crunchy stuff in it like the green one did though it's different huh okay it's just thick thick and pasty but she also has a similar set to this um you know the same type that's uh rust has three different colors yeah um, i've seen the rust one i wasn't impressed with it and I think it's because it looks too orange to me. Yeah, one of the colors in the set is actually like an ochre yellow. Yeah, which yeah. I don't think Rust really has that color, does it? I don't know. Well, very little of it. I mean, when I look at Rusty Wire or something like that, I just don't see those colors. And I guess that's why I was not in a hurry to go get that one. Because to me, it just didn't look like rust now i have done i've made rusty things just using the uh, deco art paints because uh -huh. you can mix them and get a nice rust patina but um yeah i wasn't wasn't too taken up with that one i think i need a little bit of burnt umber in the middle here and get some centers of my flowers started before I go back over that orange. I want to put some of uh, that uh, Quinn Magenta in there too. <laughs> Ian says rust, more rusty, and extra rusty. Uh, Hi Susie, she says she's popping in to say hello. Um, Hi on her break. Susie, I'm glad you're popping in to see us. We're glad you're here. She is. Um, Apparently is at work. Yeah. So she's taking a break from Somebody's work. Somebody's got to be at work. I'm glad it's not me. Yeah, I'm glad it's not me. <laughs> this is actually my work. <laughs> yeah, this is my work too. Mm -hmm. I had enough years at work. I'm ready for something other than that. Yeah. Okay, I guess I'm done with the turquoise color for now. Uh huh. Maybe, maybe I need a little okay, I'm going to dry this just a little bit, so I'm going to mute for a second. Okay. All right. So there's the color that they call blue, which is actually turquoise. Silly people. So I guess I'm going to start next with this. Um, this one is coppery color that says it's brass and I think it's the highlighter um, to highlight all the textures but since I put that other copper in the background I don't know it might be counterintuitive but I think you just go over all your textures with this one to um, bring out you know the highlights and things the tops of everything. I'm gonna have to re-glue that. But bring out this butterfly right here, and the key, and the edges of the butterfly here. Maybe the crown and the edges. And then up here, same thing, the key, a little bit on the edges. So it's more shiny than the other one. The other two were kind of matte. So that's probably the difference between the brass color and the other colors. Just want to get the tops of everything and the hi highlight of them. 
I think you could do this process pretty easily with just regular paint. Um, the only thing you yeah. wouldn't have is the texture. So you might want to mix some um, plaster of Paris or maybe like kid sand, you know, the sand kits. Maybe yeah. something like that. Mix some of that stuff in there to get this this crumbly, crunchy stuff like this has. Well, I mean, even embossing powder. I mean, you can put... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. different embossing powders especially those crunchy ones um you could Big texture emboss underneath and then yeah 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 so this is fun but i'm not sure that you have to spend the money on the little kit although it sure makes it easy it's all there for you you know well and i guess that's your choice you know do you want to do you want to have it all done for you or do you want to you know, create with what you already have. Yep, a lot of us have waxes. Like, I think I have some ink and gold wax <clears throat> that I might put on this. Um, or I might just go in with some more black, maybe, and just add some shadows. I can't get the lids back on. <laughs> oh. There we go. There we go. That one's on. I think I need more shadows. Like, uh, <clears throat> Maybe I'll dry this and then um, do something else. So I'm going to mute here for a second. Okay. All right. And I'm just creating some shadows. Um, what I want to do is get um, the separation of the petals in here. So I'm I'm actually going to water down some of this uh, Quinn Magenta. And I'm going to come into the petals here where they're at the base of the flower and do kind of a wash over this to help pull out the do you see that to pull out the blossom and get a little more water as I go out towards the edge and get a little bit more blended in there. Get my poppy, get my poppy. All right, I'm gonna come up here to this other one and see, I need to come into the middle around the center of the flower. And I think I want some along the edge of this petal here. Maybe a little more coming out from there. Okay. And need some depth up here. Separate out that petal. I don't know how much time I will have to work this because we're getting into our time, but um, I wanted to do some pen and pencil work on top of this. And I don't know if things will be dry enough for me to do that. So, I mean, yeah. if, if people have to go when they have to go, I get it. Um, but we appreciate you that can stick around and share with us. Okay, one more water. So, <clears throat> I've got some really watered down black acrylic now and I'm like going in like around this word to make it stand out. I'm adding some shadows around it and then blending it with a brush so that uh, it blends out into the rest of the stuff. And still these little flakes are coming off. 
little hmm. flakes everywhere. So I'm kind of two fisting this. I've got the dry brush in my left hand and the paintbrush in my right hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that working for you? <laughs> yeah. Back and forth, back and forth. Okay. Whatever it takes, right? Yep. The flaky stuff is coming off here. Mm. Is that ever going to stop? Am I going to have to seal it? Probably going to Oh, seal yeah. Probably wouldn't hurt to seal it. Let me get some shadows in the, the holes of this doily so that it stands out more. With this liquidy black. Just so that you see it. I mean, mm -hmm. if I put it on there, you might as well want to see it, right? Yeah. <laughs> what would be the point otherwise? So I wanted to put some other words on here, too, like um, spread your wings or, yeah, I don't know, something, something to go with my little process here. Spread your wings. Spread, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Because I got all these butterflies on here. That could probably work. Probably could. I'm just doing a little, uh, this is a little Titan buff mixed with um, burnt umber just to get down into the center of my poppies here. Bring them looking, back just a bit. Looking pretty. And I might need to dry that a little bit because I'm running out of time. <laughs> yeah, we're running out of time. I didn't think that this project was going to take me the time that it has actually i thought yeah. it was going to be a much quicker so. i'm gonna grab a text stamp i want to put something into the maybe not text maybe i'll use hmm what else do i have besides black on stays on here i have oh here's a claret that might be pretty. I have a claret and a, this is a stamp from, who's that from? Oh, that's bad. I've forgotten whose it is. Um, I can't remember. You have a lot of stuff. If you've forgotten one thing, then I think it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's probably not the end of the natural world. Probably not. But this um, has kind of that wood grain to it. And I'm using this uh, Claret fast drying solvent ink to add a little more of that wood grain in here. Andy Skinner. That's who it is. This is Andy Skinner's. And a skinner. He yeah. makes some fun grungy stuff. He does. It's a grungy guy. Well, I got these when I went and took a class from him. And it was fun. Okay, I like that color, but I think I want to add a little bit of this orange zest also. Let's see what that does. Put my stamp around. Come in here with a little of that orange zest. Sounds okay. delicious. Yeah, I had some good oranges the other day. Hmm. All right, so now that I've done that, let me get the black stays on. And I think I want just a portion of this stamp 
to go into the background here. Uh, of course, it didn't turn out, so now I have to paint a butterfly. <laughs> uh, yeah, like that's all right. I can paint can't a butterfly. Go with that. It's, uh, butterflies are nice. So. Uh, he goes this way, I think. So I decided to go out and get some heavy white gesso. Um, dang it, to put it right there. Ha! This is not the right brush. I need a stiff, stiffer brush. I'm just gonna do the slightest, slightest, slightest amount of dry brushing. Just, just like hardly anything. Just at the tops with these, as if there's a light source coming down. Mm -hmm. From above, um, just so tiny, tiny, tiny amount. Just because I like, I like. I mean, if you're gonna put texture on something, you should highlight the heck out of it, right? <laughs> of course. Works for me every time. Yeah. So maybe I didn't stick strictly to the little kit or whatever, but I think I still got the effect that the kit's going for. Yeah, I think you did. I just added a few more things of my own. I really like it, Shell. But you know me, that those colors and yeah. Yeah, this that's this would be your thing. thing. Yeah. Maybe I'll send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't turn it down, I'll tell you. That's it's cool. cool. It's um I don't know, it's not a, I guess it's not exactly what I was imagining I would be making with yeah. my palette. Not that I think it's bad or anything, I'm just saying. It turned I had out a different idea. Than, a little bit differently than what you were thinking, but I love it. I honestly do love it. It is pretty cool. It's pretty darn cool. Good use of old, nasty, uh, ruined paintbrushes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all right. It works. Let's see, I need an old nasty red paintbrush right at the moment. There we go. I'm gonna Maybe get a little just gel in the end. Put it on here. Thank you, Lindy. Thank you, Holly. Laura says that um She's talking about her art room that she's been making. And Lisa says this is going to make a good um, ornament for my studio door. Yeah. Yes, or it pegs. will. Maybe pigs. Uh -huh. Yeah, my, my, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it would. So I'm just uh, going back with a little more of this uh, brass color highlighter and um, using my finger like you would a wax. Just a little bit. Because I can't stop fussing, but I think we're about done for today. Oh, I did want to put some words on it, though. That's right. What did I say? Wings? Something about wings. Uh, uh, what, did, what did I say? <laughs> I forgot now. Dang it. Okay, ladies. What did and gents, what did she say? I can't remember. Can't remember anything anymore. I wanted to just add some words right here. Maybe I can find something in my um, Tim Holtz. 
doohickey my bobber thingy my jigger yeah that i just got i bet you can i'm gonna use the black the black ones with the white uh i don't know something that goes with wings um Leave a little sparkle wherever you go. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. That sounds like a fairy. Fairy wings. Yeah. We haven't done anything with fairies. Oh. So I am pulling out my permopaic pens. I've decided I love these on a bumpy surface. And this definitely is a textural bumpy surface. With brave wings, she flies. Oh, I like that. Let's go with that. I like that a lot. And I'm just doing a little bit of squiggle illustration on here. I might actually come in and put some, uh, you know what prowls are? Those little bead things. The liquid um, kind or the? I've got, I've got both, I think. Um, I might put some of that in the center of these poppies to give it a little more dimension pop the poppies pop the poppies make them pop yeah i wasn't going to use that word but <laughs> yes but i did it for that's okay oh darn it i don't want it to uh, stop doing that Grr. wanted to put some matte medium on there so that this little sticker sticks uh -huh. and it's um, transferring that some of that uh, copper stuff to my white words which is making me mad I guess I should have used tacky glue or something and just stuck it underneath it instead of going over the top Yeah, you get towards the end of stuff, and sometimes when we're in a hurry, we just do, and it doesn't always work out the way we wanted it to, yeah. as I'm finding here, but oh well. It's just not as bright as I wanted. You know, I wanted the white letters on that tiny little sticker to say super bright. Darn it. I don't know. Does it need words? I don't know. I don't know. Yours probably doesn't. I just had these uh, this word art on here, so I wanted something else with it. Oh well. I think I'm done. I'm done. Okay. 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 <laughs> ah, dang it. I go to press it down and it comes oh, back up. Marilyn says it was spread your wings. Spread your wings. Oh, that's yeah. Nice. And art. Spread your wings. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. It's fine. It's just fine the way it is, right? So, anybody have any questions about uh, any of this process stuff that we did today? Be glad to help you while we're here. I didn't get to my other piece. But that's okay. That's for another day. It's still drying. I still have wet medium in here. <laughs> I still have a lot of wet medium in there. But 
you can see it's it's got potential now. This is just that little throwaway that housed those metal pieces. And I could, um, you know, find all kinds of cute little things to stick into my trinket box. So you might see me do something with that later. Yep. And oh. then this is the this is the wooden piece that I painted today, which is flowers and butterflies. Pretty. Thank you. I like puppies. I do so. too. I had them, but they died out. I don't know what happened. Didn't like my ground, I guess. So here's my close-up. Close-up. So. Close gorgeous, gorgeous. I have got crumbly stuff, crumbly stuff all over my desk. Weird crumbly stuff. Huh. So I guess we're done for today. I don't, um, sometimes near the end of a project, you're working a long time and it'll, it's best to leave it for another day. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I come back to things quite often like that because you have to Marilyn, have a different eye. Marilyn is asking where your poppy stamp is from. It is a, um, oh dear, what's her name? Penny Black. Penny Black. Cling, cling, slap, cling, stick, whatever. <laughs> it's a, it's one of those big um, flower ones. And it, it was an outline. So I thought, okay, we'll just paint it. Kind of reminds me of a Donna Downey Studio stamp. Sort yeah, of. well, you know, I pulled a whole bunch of stencils out, some of which were Donna Downey's, thinking I was going to stencil today. And then I used a stamp. I'm a stamp girl. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, I like my stamps. So. All right. Well, I don't see any other questions, so I guess we're going to get out of here. All right. Thanks. Well, thanks, everybody. We'll see you yeah. next week. And. Um, have a great Don't forget week. to uh, thumbs up, comment, subscribe, share all those things, especially if you're watching in the replay. Um, help our channel grow so other people can come and join us. Yeah. And I think that's it for us. Bye bye. Thanks, Barb. Bye. Bye, Lisa. Bye, Laura. Bye, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> uh.